So my journey began about nine years ago when I started to, I got to the point where I just, I'd had enough. I'd had enough feeling this deep, dark depression that consumed my life. I had enough feeling anxious all the time and panic attacks and not being able to speak. I desperately wanted to use my voice. I knew that using my voice was part of why I was here. I didn't quite understand all these different things, but I was like, I just want to use my voice. And it was brutal. It was excruciating that I wasn't able to. And I had no idea why. And it frustrated me to the core to not understand why I couldn't speak to another person in front of me. I would be, I would go to school and I would just be petrified to talk to someone. And they would say something or I would just, and I would just choke up. Or I'd be in a group of people and I was almost just invisible and everyone's talking amongst themselves and I was just there absolutely mute, thinking of all the things that I could say. And I would, even prior to going to school, I would be thinking of what could I say today? What could I, like kind of almost preparing notes of different things that I could open a conversation with. And as soon as I'd have my opportunity to speak, it just it just didn't come. And I remember the pain in my body that I felt, the contraction in my body. The It was just incredibly excruciating. And I felt like there was something deeply wrong with me. And because I made this mean that there was something wrong with me, it would send me into spirals. And I would have these thoughts and these feelings on repeat. And I just felt stuck on this loop with no idea what was going on and I was too afraid to tell anyone about it because I was like, I don't want anyone else to know that all this stuff is wrong with me because I had the the fun program of perfectionism and people pleasing and I wanted to be perceived as perfect. I didn't want anyone to know that I wasn't perfect. And so I kept it all in and I suppressed it and I pushed it down and I used all my energy to push it down. I didn't want to cry in front of anyone. I didn't want to laugh in front of anyone. I didn't want to express anything that could be judged or perceived in a, a certain way. I didn't want to look silly or look ugly or look bad. And so I didn't express it all. And the only real expression that would come through is I would smile if someone said anything to me. And I would hide behind that mask and people were like, oh, okay, she's just shy. But she's all good. She's smiling. And I hated my smile. I hated everything about myself. But I would hide behind the smile and pretend everything was okay. And I just kept it all in. And I remember this this experience. Um, we'd do the oral presentations in English class. And I remember I would be called to the front of the class to do my oral presentation. And I had everything there. I had all the work. I did it, I did it all. But I would go out to the front of the class with my piece of paper and I would stand there and And I would just stand there <laughs> and I would just smile. And if I thought about it logically, that's kind of more embarrassing. But it's like I didn't have control over that. I didn't have the ability to move through it. And I would stand there and smile, literally say nothing until the teacher told me to go sit back down. She's like, okay, you, you just do it in recess or lunch. And it was excruciating. And I didn't realize how much that experience was held in my body until actually quite recently. I'd done a lot of work and obviously i am cleared some stuff because I'm here with you all using my voice and I really love to, to guide in this way now. But I noticed recently myself going to an even deeper level of unraveling these wounds and it just shows how deep it can go and how much more expansion is available to us, how much more we can really move through and achieve and receive. But there was this experience where I realized that this experience was deeply embedded in my body. And I could feel the pain still in my body. And I noticed that that fear of fully putting myself out there and fully using my voice was still there. It was still there. And so. As I journeyed into this, and it was in a breath session that it came up, and I had no idea 
what was coming up at the time. I was just feeling the experience of the, that experience that I had. I felt the different sensations. And then over the integration period, I realized what it was, what was revealing to me. My body was showing me that that experience was still held in my body. Because your body remembers everything. Your mind may forget, but your body remembers. And as we start to move our body, as we start to use our voice and express ourselves and shine our light of awareness and start to become aware of what we're holding within us, we have the power to do something about it. And as you release it from your body, you open yourself up to your greatest potential. You open yourself up to the intention that you set for yourself, to receiving that self-love, that acceptance, to releasing the need to people please. All of a sudden things don't trigger you as much. It's the same thing you felt yesterday or last week or last month or last year that sent you into these intense spirals that made you hate yourself more or made you feel less worthy or sent you into depression or anxiety or panic. It's the same external experience that happened but no longer are you making it mean something about you. No longer is it controlling you or having power over you. And that's what happens when we start to do this inner work. It's not easy, but it's so worth it. Things come up and it's uncomfortable. It can be painful. But when you learn to build that inner resilience and inner strength and lean in, you come out the other side a whole new being. For me, with my journey, it was, it was years of depression and it never made any sense to me because I, I had my, my needs met. I was housed. My parents were together. They loved me. I was fed. I had all, all the essentials kind of thing. And I was like, why am I depressed? And being an empath, I felt a lot of what was going on around me. And I knew how worse off so many others were in the world. And I was like, how dare I feel these things when there's someone else struggling to survive? When there's someone else out there that's hungry, that doesn't have a home, and these different things. And so I never allowed myself to feel. I never really felt like I had the right to feel. And so I just didn't let myself feel. I just suppressed it all because it was, didn't feel right. I felt wrong to feel these things. It didn't make sense why I was so anxious. I was safe. Externally, it appeared that I was safe, but I didn't feel safe in here. But I didn't know that. I didn't know that there was a difference. I was like, if these needs are met, I should feel okay. And then there was this need for perfectionism, which I always had. And so I didn't know where that came from. And not knowing frustrated me so much, being like this perfectionist, overanalyzer, very in the head. It felt so much safer to be in my head and to try and think my way through things. And I went down the path of psychology and I started to learn things and connect some dots. And I'm like, but something's missing. It's missing something, yeah. And for about five years of my journey, I stayed in my head and I tried to just work it all out and read books and attend seminars and programs and different things, but I stayed up here and I tried to really analyze it and like work out the formula. It was like when I started to learn about surrender, it's like you've got to surrender with this work. There's something that you've got to do. You've got to trust. You've got to surrender. I'm like, well, what are the steps? Tell me the steps of how to surrender and I'll do it but it's not how it works. And so it took me some time to release the need to control everything. And it was actually the moment that I found breath work where I actually learned what surrender was for the first time. I felt it. I experienced it. And that's what I'm talking about here is like we can read about surrender. We can read about self-love. We can read about all these things. But it, we need to bring it into the body. We need to feel it and experience it. And so it never made sense. And I was never able to validate why I felt the way I did until I found breath work 
and I tapped into my body and I realized how much I was actually holding my body and that suppressing my emotions was preventing me from getting to where I wanted to be. For those five years I was on, I was seeking, I was like, I was looking for exactly what I'm sharing with you. This, how do I love myself? How do I feel worthy? How do I receive and create the life of my dreams? But because I had to control everything, there was no space for allowing and receiving. Receiving is very vulnerable. You've got to be open to receive. It's vulnerable. And when you're not feeling safe and you've got to control everything, you're not open to receive. And so I had to, I, I learned the hard way <laughs> and the long way. And when I found breath, I started to actually find a way and a tool and a practice that I was able to move energy. And as I started to release and liberate this energy from within me, and I started to be able to actually see and observe my experience and what was actually going on. And I started to connect the dots because I had a lot of the stuff playing in my head. I had a lot of the knowledge. I got a lot of the concepts, but I didn't know how to embody it and practice it. I didn't know how to let go. And so as I started that journey, that was about three and a half years ago when I stepped into my first breath experience. And that's when things started to shift. And I realized the missing piece when I started my journey in learning about psychology and reading all these different books, I wasn't letting myself feel. I had to give myself that permission to feel. And through giving myself that permission and taking it step by step to tapping into my expression, like I said, I couldn't speak to a person. I couldn't say hello, let alone now I've got to wail and cry and make all these sounds and move this energy and express and move my body. That was just, no, I didn't want to look weird or look like that way. And so I just I continued to hold it in, but little bit by little bit, I kind of let it go, dipped my toe in and came back. And I would shut down again, and then I'd come out of my shell and I'd shut down again. I'd come out, and this is something that we call pendulation. And so it's the same thing here. Things come up, we feel them for a moment, and then you might find yourself going to copy mechanisms or distractions. And it's not wrong to do this. If we can start to see our distractions and copy mechanisms as kind of a, a protection or a support system, to kind of help us dip in and come back. Because sometimes we try to dive too deep into the deep end and it's too overwhelming and it re-traumatizes us. So we kind of come in and we come back out. We come in and we come back out. But what happens is we often dive into an, like a heal, the healing journey and then we're not getting from A to B fast enough. Things aren't working, things are coming up. It's uncomfortable. We're making it mean something about ourselves. And it strengthens our wanting to run away or escape, to shut down. And so if we can see our experience in a different perspective, that everything is happening for us, even when it doesn't feel like that, that we're getting triggered because there's a message here, that we're getting things coming back up because we're ready to take it deeper, we're ready to deal with this. I had a conversation recently with a client and um, she had a, an experience and there was this kind of full body stress response that happened and she froze and uh, had a lot of anxiety and didn't know what to do and she was like, well, I don't know why this is coming up. Um, I don't know what to do about this. I'm just like in absolute fear. And then I was like, and then just by shifting the, the perception, I said to her, well, what if this is actually coming up because you're ready to, to go into that now? You're ready to deal with this now. And instantly, her entire state of being shifted from a state of fear and contraction to expansion and like, yes, oh my God, yes, I'm ready to release this. This was so amazing. And she got so excited. And she was from that, that space of feeling good about what happened and the experience she was able to go so much deeper into that to really heal it. But when we get stuck in those loops of I'm not good enough, this is happening because of this, or I didn't do this right and this is why it's happening, we get caught up in that loop again and we get stuck. But by shifting that lens, we can change the entire experience. 
when I started to feel and express myself, when I started to use my voice, I started to release layer by layer by layer and I took it one step at a time. When I did my breathwork practitioner training, the end of 2019, it was seven days of breathing every day and it was really uncomfortable, really painful, it was really hard but I came out of that journey feeling more like myself than I have ever before. I tapped into my true self and I could see myself for the first time and I felt so much joy and I just had all this flowing energy because I released so much stuff that was stuck. But then I went home and I didn't know how to hold the vibration and still connect with the people that I love. And so another part of my journey was how do I be me? How do I hold my truth and stay in my center and stay grounded and still connect with those that I love? Because there's this other fear that if I change, maybe the people that I have in my life now won't see me the same, won't love me the same, won't want to be around me. And sometimes we continue to play small or hold ourselves back or shut ourselves down because we fear losing those that we love. So how do we come back to ourselves and know that by being truly you, you're actually going to deepen your relationships with your loved ones. And if there are some people that don't know how to be in the presence of your truth and your love and your light, and they may, go another direction for a period of time it's trusting that that's divinely what is needed at this time and the people that aren't in alignment with your truth will go on their own path to find their truth 